On the 28th of September, Taiwan's Republic of China Navy unveiled its first domestically built attack submarine, or what is termed the indigenous defense submarine. The boat is named the Haikang, hull number 711. Currently, the Republic of China Navy operates four attack submarines, although only two of these can be considered useful. The two boats of the Heilom class, or the Sea Dragon class, were built in the 1980s by the Netherlands, and these have some capabilities in terms of posing a threat to the Chinese PLA Navy. The other two boats, the Hai Si class, were literally built during World War II and actually saw action in World War II. They are relegated to training purposes, and quite rightly so. They are the oldest operational submarines in the world at around 80 years of service. Anyway, back to the indigenous defense submarine. The submarine 711 Haikang was laid down in the Kaohsiung shipyard in November 2020. A major driver behind the creation of the boats was to build up the domestic arms industry, particularly in naval shipbuilding. The Haikang would be the first among a class of an expected eight submarines. They would massively improve Taiwan's underwater warfare capability, as well as provide domestic firms with the capability and the know-how to build submarines. Haikang's first sea trial should happen in April next year. If everything goes according to plan, she is scheduled to be delivered to the Navy by 2026 which, to be fair, is a long time away. While the boats are touted as indigenous and domestic in origin, they actually rely on many imported foreign components, including for mission-critical systems. For example, the US company Raytheon provided the spherical sonar system installed in the bow, as well as the flank sonar arrays that were quite visible in the available photos. The Haikang does not feature a towed array sonar, possibly due to its expected usage in a shallow water environment, where towed passive sonars would not be particularly useful. According to interviews of senior military officials by the local media, engineers from the Japanese firms Mitsubishi and Kawasaki Heavy Industries were heavily involved. Reportedly, the submarines are fitted with what are described as highly efficient batteries. These most likely refer to the lithium-ion batteries that have been used on the Japanese Taige class and some of the preceding Soyu class. Lithium-ion batteries help to increase a submarine's underwater endurance and allow greater power usage for longer while underwater. These batteries will allow the Haikang to use its power-hungry spherical sonar system to full effect, despite being only a conventionally powered boat. The lithium-ion battery is also faster to recharge while on the surface. One component that is domestically manufactured is the torpedo countermeasure system. Originally, that was to be provided by Esosan, a Turkish defense contractor but that did not happen due to political constraints faced by the Turkish government. So the National Zongshan Institute of Science and Technology developed a torpedo countermeasure system domestically and integrated it into the boat with two six-round canisters mounted on each side of the boat. Nevertheless, despite the existence of some domestic technology, most of the mission-critical systems are imported from overseas. If we evaluate the submarines without any context, the new boat appears pretty good in most respects. It has much of the latest gadgets and technology for diesel-powered attack subs. It is also quite big, with an estimated displacement between 2,500 to 3,000 tons. So there's plenty of internal space to dedicate to rafting and various other sound reduction measures, making the boat more stealthy. So how does Taiwan plan to use these submarines? Well, a number of remarks by local politicians sitting on committees overseeing the submarine project offer some clues. Bear in mind though, of course, even though these politicians are responsible for the project, 
it doesn't mean that the opinions are correct. The Republic of China Navy may have a different opinion that they keep to themselves. Based on their comment, the new boats are not intended to stop an amphibious assault by the PLA forces across the Taiwan Strait, and that does make sense because the Haikang and the rest of her class are fairly large boats for non-nuclear submarines. The Taiwan Strait is on average 50 to 60 meters deep, and these boats will find it very difficult to hide in these very shallow waters. Keep in mind a sub less than 20 meters from the surface can generally be seen with the human eyeball from directly above. There will be deeper parts of this Taiwan Strait where they can hide better, but operating in these waters severely limits their operational flexibility. So the new boats are meant to be used elsewhere. But where exactly? Well, apparently the plan is to use the Haikang and her sisters to bottle up and contain the PLA Navy within the first island chain. The new attack subs would sit quietly in key waterways, waiting to ambush passing PLA Navy warships with their Mark 48 heavy torpedoes. These include the Bashi Straits to the south between Taiwan and the Philippines, and the Miyako Straits between the Japanese islands of Miyako and Okinawa. According to Yu Beicheng, a local politician from Taoyuan, the two waterways of the Miyako Strait and the Bashi Strait only require two submarines each to render impassable for surface warships. According to him, Taiwan will have eight or more submarines on top of what it already has, so that would be more than sufficient to seal off the key waterways from the PLA Navy. The PLAN's East Sea Fleet and the South Sea Fleet should they wish to enter the deep waters of the Pacific Ocean, will need to break through the first island chain to the east. By positioning Taiwan's submarines in the aforementioned key waterways, it will deter the PLAN from even attempting to break the first island chain. According to Mr. Yu, the threat from the Mark 48 torpedoes or the anti-ship missiles of the boat will be enough to sway the PLAN from entering the waterways. Or so he thinks. The waters in these two straits are deep enough for a large diesel boat like the Haikang to operate effectively. Mr. Huang Su Guang, the head of the National Committee on the Domestic Submarine Project, essentially agreed with Mr. Yu's analysis. According to Mr. Huang, the main mission of the new attack subs will be to contain the Chinese Navy inside the first island chain and prevent PLA naval forces from entering the Pacific Ocean to encircle Taiwan from the east and west. So contrary to some expectations in the west, the point of the new submarines is not to stop a PLA amphibious landing force. That is a job that they simply cannot do. Rather, the core mission of the new boats is to contain PLA naval forces inside the first island chain, and in the minds of the Taiwanese planners, to prevent a full encirclement of Taiwan. This means in the event of war with mainland China, there is a chance in the minds of these Taiwanese planners that US ground reinforcements could reach the island, or so they think. In my view, much of this is wishful thinking. Critically, the submarines will be operating without air support, as Chinese destroyer forces clear the skies of opposing aircraft and Chinese naval air forces will be able to operate in the waterways where these submarines will hide. Without air support, and preferably air superiority, Chinese maritime patrol aircraft and anti-submarine helicopters will be able to operate freely. It will only be a matter of time before these boats are found and engaged. So their contribution will be to delay rather than prevent the PLA Navy from achieving a full naval encirclement.